Today we're going to talk about garlic, and I'm going to try to clear up some of the terminology associated with it. So we'll start with the intact piece. This is either a head of garlic or it's sometimes called a bulb. Either one is the same. Uh, and when you break off one piece, uh, if I can do that here, this becomes just the clove of garlic. So most of the time when we're talking about recipes, they're talking about these, not those. You buy them in that form, uh, but you use them in this form. So that's just to start it off. Then I wanted to talk about some of the different kinds of garlic. Most of the time when you go to the grocery store, you're going to find soft neck garlic, which is what you have here. You can see that there's not a hard core in the middle of it anywhere. It's the most common kind in the supermarket. Also lots and lots of cloves in there so that uh, you buy one uh, head of garlic and you have lots of cloves for many recipes. This is a hard neck version and you can see that right in the center, uh, it, there is a, a hard stem that came through. Uh, fewer cloves. It's also got a sharper taste. Some people prefer this. Uh, it's got a lot more bite to it than this one will. Uh, and then this one is elephant garlic, and you can see why that probably got its name, because they look like they're on steroids, and they're, they're much larger. And it's actually fallen apart, and then you can see here this would be the stem that would be found in the center. Um, these have a very, very mild flavor, in part because it's not really garlic. Uh, it's uh, related to, the, it's in the leek family as opposed to in the garlic family. Uh, so it's got a little bit of a hint of onion in it when you use it. So uh, they're fun if you don't want to peel a lot of garlic. Uh, you can use them, but expect it to have a very mild flavor when you're using it. How you store them, uh, all of them will be stored the same way. None of them ever, ever, ever should see the inside of your refrigerator um, because uh, that will cause them to uh, deteriorate much quicker. So cool, dry, and dark. Uh, you can put them in a brown paper bag. You can use one of those little clay pots uh, that are made for garlic. Those work well, uh, but don't refrigerate them. It also changes the flavor on them, uh, can make them more uh, sharp. The other thing that you don't want to do uh, that I tend to do here when I'm doing the show is prep them too early because the longer they sit, the more enzymes uh, that are going to activate some of the chemicals within the garlic itself and it's going to in, expand the flavor and make it sharper and sharper. So uh, room temperature, prep it at the end right before you need it. Um, make sure that the, the bulbs are firm when you buy them, not soft. Now let's look at a couple of ways that you can prep them. Uh, one of the ways that's really common uh, is roasting. And if you haven't done this, I encourage you to do so because it really mellows out the flavor. Anytime the garlic gets up to at least 140 degrees, the enzymes are destroyed and the, the sharp flavors begin to disappear. Uh, so you uh, get something that's got a lot of a more softness to it. So the first thing you want to do if you want to roast it is to, well, preheat your oven somewhere between 350 to 400. So you can do it when you're doing something else. Uh, and then there's this paper uh, wrapping or paper coating peel that you want to take off the garlic as you go around it. Then you want to expose the cloves themselves. So set it down and cut at least a quarter of an inch so you can get as many of the, the cloves exposed as possible. And then you have several options. You could do them one at a time. You could fill up a pie plate with them. I'm going to use three. My oven's preheating. Uh, so we're going to put them in foil. Now, if you're doing one at a time, you do it exactly the same way. You're going to put some oil in here. And be generous with the oil because we want it to, uh, uh, it helps cook it while it's in the oven too. So drizzle it around so that it coats the cloves and kind of drips down the sides. This is so easy. You're going to be amazed. And, and the flavor is so great. Now, I'm simply going to wrap this together and wrap it up in the foil nice and snug. You can do it fancier, but this works just as well. Uh, then I usually put it in a pie plate, simply because if something breaks open, I don't want to find it at the bottom of my oven. It kind of protects it a little bit. Now, you could have put a little bit of oil in this pan, filled that pan with garlic heads uh, with the little tops cut off, and then covered that with foil. This is then going to go in the oven, uh, and it's going to go in there. The time is going to vary. Uh, in part because it depends on how much you have, what variety you have, how your oven is calibrated. Usually somewhere between 40 to 50 minutes, 40 to minutes to an hour. Uh, you can open it from time to time and look and see if it's browning. What we want to have happen is we want it to get nice and soft. This one was cooked ahead. So it's nice and soft and it's got a little bit of, of brownness going on it as well. So how do you use that? 
Well, you can do it with several ways. If you have a soup or a stew that you think needs a little bit more flavor to it, uh, you can uh, take that and uh, squeeze out one or two cloves and just stir them in the soup. These are nice and soft now, so they'll blend in and smooth, uh, the, uh, disappear in that soup or stew really quickly, and it's a nice way to add some depth of flavor that you might not get otherwise if you're making a quick soup. Or if you're trying to take a soup that you got uh, already made from somewhere else and you're trying to make it your own, another way to do it also. Now these, you're just going to squeeze them out of here and then they can be spread on bread also. This is the same way you get them out if you want to uh, use them on something else. If, in general, if you're going to do this uh, and have uh, spread on bread, estimate that each person's going to need somewhere between a half to a whole head of garlic, and that way they uh, have plenty of uh, garlic to work with. This one probably needs a little bit more. You could drizzle a little bit more on this. You could put it on, on uh, bread that's already been toasted, uh, or you can make garlic bread really easily as well. So there's a lot of ways to do it uh, that can give you a lot of flavor, and it's a lot better than if you go with something like this. Now, this is already peeled, all ready to go. Uh, you don't want to do this yourself at home, uh, particularly if you're using it in oil. You never leave a garlic and oil mixture at room temperature because it becomes a situation where you have a low acid food now in an anaerobic situation uh, without oxygen. And if, if those two things going together can result in botulism toxin and, and they're having you know, cases of botulism poisoning as a result of garlic in oil mixtures. If you do want it to do that, you can do it. Uh, use it very quickly. Store it in the refrigerator. You can also store it in the freezer uh, and then just break off bits when you want. One of the reasons these, these kinds of products are used is because they are very convenient. Uh, if, however, you uh, are using a recipe, uh, you saw the different size of cloves here. Uh, if it tells you one clove, well, one clove of elephant garlic or even a large cl a clove of, of some other kinds of garlic, so you kind of don't know where you are. So it, what it really means when it says one clove is one teaspoon if it's chopped, half a teaspoon if it's minced. Once you know these garlic basics, you can really go out there and, and explore the world of garlic. All the different varieties have a little bit of different flavor. So if you're drawing, growing them in your own garden, you've got it, some real challenges of uh, tasting and some fun exploring what you're going to have when you're done. For Oklahoma Gardening, I'm Barbara Brown. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.